this one's also got the uh, optional a crop of itch. Oh dear, they've come together. Welcome back to the channel guys and today I'm back on the muddy stuff inspired by my trip to Spain with the Triumph Adventure Experience. I thought I'd get myself out on the lanes again. This is the ES700 Gas Gas. Now this bike is really, it's a uh, it's a KTM 690 <laughs> with red plastics on. A little bit cheaper than the uh, the KTM Enduro version because the brakes are slightly different spec. You know, the Gas Gas range is the cheaper version to the KTMs, the Huskies. The slightly more budget, sort of 500 quid or so cheaper than a KTM alternative and probably a thousand pound cheaper than the Husqvarna alternatives. If you're getting a bit more serious with your off-road, don't want to take a massive 200 kilo adventure bike on the lanes then this could be the machine for you so uh, settle down grab yourself a drink of something tasty and chopsy roll the intro So yes, I am hot back from my trip to Spain where I've been learning a bit of off-road. All the tricks I've learnt riding the Tiger 900s, I want to try and sort of put into effect with this machine, you know, to bring me that confidence back, which I've lost, you know, not because I haven't done off-road for so long. So we're going to go out today, a few lanes. Um, depending how I get on will depend on the severity of the lanes which we go on. Jumping aboard this, very familiar sight for me, all the controls, everything exactly the same as my 690. The new, my 690 is a 2019 bike. This has the new dash, which has a gear indicator and sort of a rev counter. Very basic, you say rev counter. I'll shout at me in a minute, it's not really a rev counter. Yeah, unfortunately the rear brake is not <laughs> really where I want it to be. But this feels so light compared to the big old Tigers and uh, yeah this is good though this is good as I say on this bike it's got 250 millimeters of travel front and rear so it's got decent this, this WP suspension is decent suspension you know unlike the little Honda CRF which was have had a very soft rear shock you know this is proper this is a proper off-road suspension I think it's the same suspension really that goes on the full gas gas enduro models. So proper suspension, 74 horsepower. Now this, this thing's got some power. But the great thing about this boy, yes, it's capable on the lanes, but it's also very capable on the road. And I think this is where this machine sort of excels above the normal sort of enduro bikes. Because if you get a full on enduro, yeah, they're about 100 kilos. Absolutely incredible off-road, so lightweight, you can do anything with them. But when it comes to going on the road, you know, they're hard work. They're really hard work. You can do any sort of distance on them. Whereas this bike, you can actually do a bit of a tour on one of these. As I say, it will cruise at 70, 80 miles an hour. Absolutely no problem at all. It's got a quick shift of lipper <laughs> and an extra neutral. Now, what we'll do here, we will go straight over, which is somewhere I didn't go on the uh, the V-Strom or the uh, Trans Out because it gets a little bit rooty this way. It's fine to start with, but it does get a little bit rooty. Where's that rear brake? Oh, that rear brake is too low. It wants to be higher. Good news about, you know, it's pretty dry. Last time I came down here, it was winter and it was... Uh, all muddy and slippery. As I say, it is a little bit rooty down here. But this is, you know, this, this, this is where that extra suspension travel comes into its own. You know, it's absolutely soaking, soaking this up. 280 millimetres of ground clearance as well. You know, way more than a, an adventure bike or way more than the, the little Honda. Getting gnarling up a little bit now. Yeah, such a lightweight bike. 
think it's 155 kilos dry, I think. So I don't know what the wet weight is. KTM or gas gas, so they, ne they never tell you the wet weight of these machines. But I'd imagine 165, something like that. Oh, it's very overgrown. Remember, look where you want to go, chops. Don't get drawn in. Don't get drawn in with it. Yeah, red brake. First way, don't look where, look where you want to go. Plenty of grip in this. I'm not sure what tyres this has got, but they're, you know, they're sort of a good 50-50, quite off-roady. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. All right, we're ready for another one. I don't know if I am. I'm rubbish. It's like bloody bikes. I'm not shifting. We break. We break. <laughs> oh yeah. Now we're cooking on gas. Gas, gas. <laughs> Ooh, bad joke. Well, I'm going to go down here. I've never taken a venture bike down here. This is really just for Enduros down this way. But actually, because it's so rutted, and I haven't been down here since the winter, normally this is uh, normally this is completely clear, but obviously it's all overgrown. And this is all chalk as well. And you've got a nasty barbed wire fence on the left. Stand up now. Let's get on that rear brake. Oh, we've got a great big rut here. This is when you're pleased you've got that extra bit of ground clearance. So we're not full on enduro tyres either. This is a. Oh, yeah, it's a big rut there. I can't see it. It's hidden by the grass. <laughs> oh, dear, cameras taking a pounding. I'm stuck in a dirty great rut here, which I can't even see because of the grass. I could go on the left there, but then you've got a barbed wire fence. If you make a mistake, you're literally in the barbed wire. Take it steady, chop seal, check for the chalk. Chalk in the dry is probably okay. <sighs> Why did I come this way? Ah, oh, right on my face. It's a trouble sat down, you can't. I can't kind of have to though, because there's a big rut here which you just cannot see at all. Cannot see them at all. And I know there's big ruts here because I've been down here in the winter. Wow, look at this. Oh. I've fallen foul of these ruts before. There you can see, so you can't. Oh, don't go. Oh, fuck! Oh. Oh, oh my word, I couldn't lift the foot off a peg and I knew there was a great big hole here and of course I looked at it so I went down it uh, uh, uh. Oh, I've got to try and get under the bike now uh, this is when you're, you're pleased you haven't got 250 kilos to to hoy cut, I'm never going to have to get out from behind it. Oh, let's get out that way. Oh, God, it's a long way down there. Let's try and get over the side. Ugh. This one's also got the uh, optional Akopovich. Like I didn't fall on that side. And it's got the crash bars. That's the Insta360. Who right down there? Oh, it's time to man up now. Put some effort in. Stinging that horse. Wow, oh, it's stinging that horse. <sighs> Stuck on something. <sighs> Christ. Yeah, I'm uh, quite pleased this bike isn't any heavier than what it is. Mickey Mouse has had a whack. I love off road me. Whose idea was this? Whose pissing idea was this? Yeah, the pegs are actually hitting the edge of the of the rut. This is really rutty. There's no way I'm going to be able to ride this down here. I'm going to have to pa paddle it. Yeah, this is horrible. 
This is our bowl. Hello, sheepy. Don't mind me. Just making a twat of myself. I knew this was rutty down here. I didn't think it'd be quite as bad as this. I forgot that the you wouldn't be able to see the ruts because of all the grass. I fell off down here on a gas gas last time. Oh, I've got something up my nose. Oh, I think I just got a bug up my nose. Pulled it off of the skid, did I? Did I style it out? <laughs> Let's just check it out. Check it out for Damage. Damageos. Oh, God. Covered in bits. This old trooper, look at it, it's still ticking away. Oh, jeez. I'm going to take my helmet off full of all sorts. So anyway, I've composed myself and we will continue. I've cleared out all the bugs from my helmet. <laughs> Ooh, uh, that's what she said. Oh, tarmac. Blessed tarmac. It's all right, love, don't worry. I'm not going to run your rats over. So anyway, where was I? <laughs> Demonstrating my fine off-road skills. I wish my flaps would stay shut. <laughs> oh, that's what she said. There's one here. There's somewhere just like here. It looks like it's someone's house. Yeah, this one. That's what this one says. No public, public right away. No through route. No through route for motor vehicles. That used to be a green lane. Used to be a green lane. It's another one which is gone. I think Salisbury Plain is like your best bet these days for some decent r lanes. I think you've got the uh, Trans, let's say Transatlantic Trail, Transcontinental Trail, which I think runs up through Basingstoke. And yeah, that's somewhere you can go. And this bike would actually be great for that because there's a bit of road work to get there. That's probably too far to go on a, you know, a full on enduro. This would be perfect for that sort of transcontinental trail. You can go in the whole country on that. You'd obviously, you'd have to do a little bit of on-road. Another closed one. Why can't they open the trails during the summer? I can understand why they might be closed in the winter, because they get chewed up and then people moan and then they have to come and resurface them all because they are sort of public rights of way. But open them in the summer, and then and no, no one really does enduro in the summer because it's just too easy, unless you're shit like me. But open them in the summer so you can people can have a little play on them without damaging them. And I can understand it also with the you know with the cars that do the off-roading because they absolutely destroy the lanes, absolutely destroy them. But the lightweight bikes, they don't do much damage. They do a little bit. If, if you're careful, they don't do much. But the cars just absolutely destroy them. So I can get it. I can get why they close them to fit to cars. But leave some open for us bikes. Hey, look, there's a little sign there that no vehicles again. These all used to be open. Oh, it's quite a tall bike. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, that was disgusting! Oh, absolutely midgy central then. Oh, that was horrible. Look at them all over me. Get off, you dirty little bastards. Oh, god, did you see that? Clouds and clouds of little midgy things. Oh, absolutely disgusting. Closed. Can't get through that. No vehicles. Sorry. It's like you fucking sweat. I think your vehicle may be a little bit large for such a lane. If I'm absolutely honest. Uh, this is uh Yeah, I don't know quite what's gonna happen here. It's just a tad tight. More midges everywhere. Well oh, they're following me, the cloud of them follow me. Come on, mate. Oh, Jesus. Has he just gone down the side of it? He can get that van further forward than that. This is just a disaster, isn't it? <laughs> this is a right adventure. Oh, I'm getting midgy to death. 
Oh, is, that, is he touching that? Oh dear, they've come together in a rather unfortunate way. <laughs> I think I'm just going to turn around. Let's leave them to it. I think there's going to have to be some assurance details exchanged there. With these tyres, the road banner's is actually pretty good. They're quite knobbly, the tyres, but they've still got a sort of rounded profile to them. You know, a full-on enduro tyre is like a flat, a flat profile, you know, for, for not running much pressure, you know, for not going around corners at, at, at any real speed, you know, even in the dry. Brakes are also very good. But, you know, you can sort of throw this around and have a bit of fun on the road. You know, it's a good, it's a real 50-50 motorcycle, this, I'd say. A proper 50-50 vehicle. I know a lot of the guys in Spain have these sorts of bikes. Yeah, you don't bother about down there. It's carnage. So 70 miles an hour. Six gear. Yeah, the wind protection, we've got a little screen here, but I'd say it does nothing, to be honest. I'm getting three eights, that's your rev counter, those eights. So six eights is top revs, I'm sort of half revs, that's sort of 60 miles an hour. You can cruise at 70, you can even push to 80, all day, you know, no worries. So if you were looking for probably the ultimate go anywhere, travel bike you know the ultimate go anywhere travel bike a bike which has got some really serious off-road ability <laughs> unlike me you know I've, I've not been able to show this bike off to its full uh, potential but this bike's got some serious off-road credentials you know it's, it's it's the best ever blend of enduro and road bike you know yeah you know it's lightweight 155 kilos cruises 70 80 miles an hour yeah it's not as comfortable the seat the, the seat is quite thin you know it's not a bike which you'd want to travel around the uk on you know it, it, it's a good blend of you know it's better than not as comfortable as an adventure bike of course it's not but you can't do the sorts of terrain on an adventure bike that you could potentially negotiate on this you know i don't think there's another bike out there which is as accomplished as this and will do the same sort of miles and, and be as good you know as good road manners as this you know i i, I do think this bike and oh no, when i say this bike i'm talking about the the 690 the husky 701 you know it's all the same bike and i don't think there's another bike like it another bike quite like it for doing lanes and road there's not another 50 50 bike out there they're always more like 80 20 or yeah or the road 80 20 or off-road 80 20 or 70 30 you know there's nothing which is 50 50 and i think this is a true way 50 50 machine and it's serious fun this there's a road bike it's serious fun as well you know wheel lifting get it get it mapped if you really want to unlock it get it mapped and they're absolutely absolute animals for standard they're a little bit restricted at the bottom end you just lose so much torque and you gain so much more torque once it's been mapped air fills for the mapping or just the mapping would probably do the job if you want to keep the standard filter because you're going to be going in dusty environments that's understandable just get it mapped, just get rid of that Euro nonsense and release it to its full potential.